Hey everybody, do you want to make some gorgeous cards out of your white paper scraps? Well, come on in. Hi everybody, it's Julia Laird with Senior Susie Stamps and we're continuing our scrap card series uh, on Thursdays uh, this fall and I wanted us to look at using some white paper scraps today. I don't keep a lot of white paper scraps. I try to use them up and do this process about every three months. So I'm going to show you today how I store my white paper scraps and uh, have a fun idea to use some of them up. Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to all of our subscribers that have come on board recently. There have been quite a few of you and I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a vote of confidence to me. It's been kind of a, a long hill climb up uh, the learning curve for me in YouTube and I appreciate your vote of confidence. So let's go get started. Come on. Because of the way I cut paper, I have some very specific uh, white paper scrap scraps. <laughs> and I have quarter inch pieces that I've used for trim offs for the first layer. And I keep those in here. And then I have half inch pieces that I have for trimming off to the second layer on my uh, little layer diagram. And then if I'm going to do a third layer cut off, I've got some, or fourth layer, excuse me, I've got some little one inch pieces. So those pieces all go in this little tray and it stays up here underneath my uh, little uh, computer monitor riser things that I've got up there. And then I have larger pieces. These are four and a quarter by eight and a half pieces that are the second card from a mini slimline card. I've got some of them folded up into cards. I'm going to make these up for Christmas cards. But then I have some that are not folded in case I need a big piece of white paper scrap. These little trays just came from the dollar store or Walmart. They're not expensive and they fit perfectly for me and my needs. And then I have anything that's over an inch wide. And this is where I keep my paper scraps that are a little bit larger that I might want to stamp a butterfly or anything uh, that I want to stamp onto white paper. So that's that. Now today we're going to be using some smaller pieces of white paper. And the reason I chose these is because this is not a stark white. This is more of a creamy white. And I don't know where it came from. It's been hanging around. And I want to get it used up as much as possible today. So let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to take a piece of just plain copy paper and drop a little line of ATG over by the edge. We're going to use some stencils today. Then I'm going to take this these little scrap strips and put them right on the edge side by side and snug them up. There. Now I've got my little marker here so I'm going to drop a line over here on this side too. And it does not have to be exact because we're going to pull them back off of here. All this is doing is just holding these little strips in place so that I can use um, my stencil over top of them. And I want them snugged up because I want the stencil pattern to be continuous all the way across. I have several cards to show you today, but I think we can do um, just one uh, little bit of technique and you'll get the concept of what I'm doing fairly quickly. Now up here on this one, because these are not quite six inches, I'm going to drop a little bit more ATG down and put one more piece up here. And that will give me a little strip to go on the inside. Now, as I said, I'm going to use some stencils today. And these both came from uh, Paper Wishes at some point and I think they have an identifier on them. Okay, this one is 92481 
it's a 2015 publication it's just some some scroll and then this is some f roses and it is nine two five three one and it's just the roses stencil and I'm going to put the roses stencil down first these are six by six stencils and I want the stencil to come all the way over to this edge as much as possible I'm going to use some removable tape to hold that down with and this is just scotch magic tape that's removable so I'm going to stabilize that whoopsie I'm going to stabilize this whole unit here all right like this and maybe put one up here too because I need this to stay stationary okay I got some ink uh, in some in some fallish colors pumpkin pie Cajun craze old olive and lucky limeade and we're going to go through those now and I'm just going to use a brush blender on this I'm going to start with the lightest color on the oranges, which is pumpkin pie. And all I'm going to do now is to colorize these uh, little rose flowers. And there's going to be a lot of um, additional color on these flowers as we build another layer. So as long as I get them kind of all colored in a little bit I think that'll be good enough so we're just working around the stencil and all I'm doing in this pumpkin pie now is just these roses I believe there's one more right here there we go and now I'm going to take a little bit of this pumpkin pie because I want to have an option on my sentiment later and I want to have a little color piece that's kind of the same clean my brush just a little bit I can close this up and I'm going to go back to Cajun Craze which is ooh that's a nasty looking ink pad isn't it that's one of those that I got used isn't it <laughs> but it works good all I'm going to do now is to add just a little more color into these in the center of these flowers you know how some roses are they're darker in the middle so that's all we're doing here just adding a little more um, color so that it has just an extra little bit of interest in the roses themselves okay that will do it I think there now we're going to be switching off colors and I know I don't want anything that dark so I didn't need to do a little strip I'm going to set this brush aside and uh, I'll clean it a little bit later looks like I missed one right there so let me do just a little bit of this color right here and that'll be good enough there we go now Now I'm going to switch off to Lucky Limeade, which is the lighter of these two greens. They're very close, and that's fine. That's what I'm interested in. And then I'm going to do the green leaves and swirls of this stencil in this green. And just kind of travel around the stencil itself using this grain and try not to get too much onto uh, where the roses are because I really kind of want them to be mainly uh, 
the orange, the pumpkin pie and Cajun craze. Now, I'm going to take this stencil and put it over top. And I'm going to change greens. And when this reveals, you'll see um, the rose pattern is the predominant pattern. So you have to decide now, when you're doing this technique, which pattern you want to be the predominant pattern. Now I'm going to change out to this old olive, which is a darker green. And I'm going to go over these main areas here again. And I don't mind getting a little bit on the petals of the roses. So I'm going to pull this on pretty heavy now. And there we go. This is one of the things that I like about stenciling. It's quick. You get a really nice end result. And you don't have to spend forever and ever and ever fooling with it. Okay, I'm going to set these brushes aside. I got ink on my fingers. Uh -huh. Wouldn't be a day without ink on my fingers, would it? Let me get a baby wipe. Hang on. While I got my baby wipe here, um, I'm going to clean these brushes because I've, I've kind of got some of the ink off of them there, but if you look, there's all this ink left on these brushes. And I clean mine like this before I go to put it away because the next time I use it I don't really want all that ink to be possibly messing up my next project so there we go and I keep them in a little rack up here my brushes so even though they kind of run clean on the paper you still have a lot of ink in these brushes and I encourage folks to clean their equipment uh, periodically. Just have a cleaning day and clean your stuff because they last a lot longer and they do good service that way. Now, okay, it's the fun time now. Let's just see what we've got coming off of this one. Isn't that pretty? And colorful and it's got some nice fall color on it. So that's good. And what I'm going to do now is to pull these strips apart. And I'm going to keep them in order, and that's critical. So however you start, you got to keep working in that same direction. Because when I put these on a card, I'm going to want to follow that same direction so that there's a continuity in the card itself. Well, so what do you think so far? I think this is a great way to use white paper scraps. I'm going to show you some in just a minute where I've used some half inch paper and some quarter inch paper. So this is the one that I'm going to put on the inside. And I'm going to set these aside in my soaker tray. You know, I have some uh, first layer papers over here. Cordelia's fooling around over there on her cat tree, being rambunctious. I don't know if you can hear her or not. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to cut this down. This is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. It's a full cover page. And this is where some of those scraps come from. And I'm going to cut it to three and three quarters. Better pay attention. <laughs> three and three quarters by five. And so these are half inch scraps that are usable. And they'll go over here in my little tray. Right over there. And now what I'm going to do is to decide how many of these will actually be workable and I'm going to do that by following the pattern 
What I like to do is leave just a little strip between them. And it's looking like maybe uh, four pieces. So what I want to do then is to pick my four pieces up out of the way. And this one will go right like this. I'm going to get this mat out of here so that I can use my grids because it's very, very helpful. To use your grids this way. Now, I'm going to put these up on some foam. And these are one inch pieces, and this is one inch foam, so I'm going to cut just a little bit off of each of these strips. And I'll need two more. That way, you won't see the foam when you're making your card. And these are usable strips of foam then. Yay! <laughs> okay, so let me get some foam on the back of these. I made a couple of these cards the other day. <laughs> and I got my strips kind of turned around. Not out of order, but turned around. It took me forever to figure that out. <laughs> okay, so have I done it again? there. Uh, I've done it again. There. That's the way that one goes. And then this one's here and that one's there. Okay. So, I'm going to start in the middle of this card. Because I know the, it, this is going to be wider, and so I'm going to trim the, boat, the outside two pieces. But I want to trim them equally. So I'm going to start with the, new, the two middle pieces and just set them apart. This is my center line right here. And I'm going to put these just off of that center line a little bit. And I'm going to put this edge just right on that, sh that top piece of paper so that my pattern will pull up right. There's one. And then I'm going to do the other center piece. And I'm just going to spread them apart just a little bit. Just whatever my eye kind of thinks it likes right now. And then I'm going to put these other two pieces on and then we'll trim. And I'm going to try to do the same amount of split here. So that when I cut, I'm cutting an equal piece here and here. There we go. About like about like that. Okay. Now I think we're going to have to trim this just a touch. And I may need to put this on the guillotine cutter again and trim just a new size down. We'll see in just a sec what it looks like. There. And you can see now, this is pretty much the same size as this, but you'll also notice that it's a little short up here. These uh, strips of white were just a little too uh, short. So, we're going to take just a tines off, and I'm just going to use my guillotine cutter. And I'm not going to worry that this is just a little bit shy of five inches. We're still going to go with a three-quarter inch layer on that. And we're going to mount this up onto a white uh, card base. I believe I'll do top folding. There we go. And I'm going to glue this down. Get my tweezers. 
I always gotta have my tweezers, don't I? <laughs> Never fails. Okay, I'm just gonna put an equal border all the way around and that glue gives me just enough time to make sure that I've got that squared up right. There we go. It needs to come that way just a little bit. Now, this is where this piece comes in, and I'm going to use a sentiment off of this little set that I've got here, and I'm just going to use Heartfelt Wishes, and this is always in my thoughts. It's an old Stampin' Up! set. I'm going to stamp that down in Versafine Onyx Black because I want it to be uh, nice and black. There we are. I'm going to make a butterfly for this card out of this. I'm going to use a scrap of white paper out of my larger scrap tray. And I'm going to use the darkest green, which was the old olive. I just want the butterfly figure. There we are. I'm going to put a little color on that. I got a couple of Copics here. They are uh, G12 and G24, and I've got a Spectrum Noir OR1. This is not um, colorizing for more than just adding a little color to the butterfly. I'm not doing any detail work. All I want to do is to get some color that corresponds with that card. And I'm going to kind of get it down quick so I can kind of blend these colors just a touch. I think I'm going to put a little dark green on the inside of this. And then I'm going to fussy cut him. And all I'm doing with this dark green is following that little stamp pattern there. And then letting the rest of it go. So I'm going to fussy cut this and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my little butterfly cut out. And I cut my heartfelt wishes apart and I put a little black edge on two sides just for a little shadow effect. So. We're ready to glue this down. And these colors coordinate well enough, I think. And this little butterfly is searching around for some nectar on these roses. And I'm going to put the heartfelt wishes kind of a kilter because I don't want to really cover up any of these roses too much with it. But the colors coordinate because we use the same ink for those. Now the butterfly is a little different. Can't help that. Now I want to take one of these and cut it down to do a little strip on the inside here and this card will be finished. I'm going to use have a wonderful day on the inside and we're done. Let me show you these other cards now that I have made doing the same techniques. Okay, so this was the first card that I made and it has a uh, birch tree stencil with a snowflake on top of it um, in a dual process using two different blues. These are punched snowflakes and I use these two uh, snowflake punches and just some little small uh, turquoise gems. This is a little small stamp uh, from Stampin' Up! years ago. I put it on the skin and cut and cut it out. Um, and here's the inside. I had a little piece left, so we just did a little inside treatment to kind of match the outside. And here is another couple of cards 
on this paper um, this is half inch strips of course by five and a half and um, I was able to get a mini slim line and a regular A2 size card out by trimming this down lengthwise um, and the insides are both finished as well with a little strip I used that same butterfly and I punched some holes here and did a little weaving with this uh, ribbon I thought that was kind of a different look and then this is the one we did today and the finished inside and I have one more this is quarter inch strips and this was the quarter inch piece and I had enough left over to do a little piece on the inside now it's spliced but you probably wouldn't have noticed that now when I did this one on the quarter inch pieces I went ahead and spritzed it with just a little tiny bit of water so that I could harvest the ink up on this first layer of paper background so you have kind of the negative and positive image of the stencil uh, on this card front so I hope you have enjoyed today's video and that you'll have a great week and I'll talk to you soon bye bye everybody